I'd like to do a couple of examples of um, position, velocity, and acceleration just to um, give you a little bit more feel for how this works. So in the first example, we're going to have a car that is moving to the left and speeding up. Okay, and what I would like to do is draw position, velocity, and acceleration vectors for this motion. Okay, so the way I'm going to start is the way that um, I suggest you start most physics problems, and that's just with a sketch. So um, what I'm going to do for the sketch is I'm going to start out um, with the car on the right side of the screen, because it's going to be moving to the left. Um, because it starts out slow and it's speeding up, it's going to move a short distance in the first time interval, and then it's going to move a longer distance, and then a longer distance, and then a longer distance. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so this type of diagram is called a strobe diagram. Um, if you've ever um, played with a strobe light, it basically just flashes very rapidly. And so it looks like objects that are moving are just in individual positions um, as they move. It's um, an interesting effect. So essentially we're imagining that we just take a photo every few seconds or like maybe every second, um, but at equal time intervals, that's key. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I want to start out by drawing position vectors. So I'm just going to pick an origin and I'm allowed to pick the origin to be anywhere that I want. So there's no reason not to pick a convenient location. Um, I'm going to just put my origin over here to the right of the um, objects. Actually, to make this a little clearer, I'm going to put it right here in line with the objects. Okay, we're just considering sort of one dimension of this. All right, so my position vectors then go from the origin to the location where the object is at each time. Okay, so I'm not going to draw them on top of my sketch because I think it'll be too confusing. I'll just shift them down a little bit. So position one goes from the origin all the way over to where the object is at time one. This is position one. Okay, um, position two starts at the origin, goes all the way over oops, to where the object is at time two. Okay, and then position three, all the way over to here. Position four, and position five, like this. Okay, now the place I put the origin was totally arbitrary. You could have put the origin to the right um, and had your position vectors pointing left. You could even put it off axis and have them all pointing in different directions. That would be really confusing, but there's no reason why you couldn't do that. Okay, um, so those are my position vectors um, and I can kind of check that off. All right, so next up, I want to draw velocity vectors. And remember, to draw velocity vectors, um, the key piece of information is that velocity is going to be delta x over delta t. Um, and I'm just going to draw average velocity vectors rather than um, instantaneous, because I don't really have instantaneous information, um, but it'll look similar. You'll see what the pattern looks like. Okay, so first I need to draw the um, change in position vectors. So to go from position one to position two using pirate map rules, uh, let's see, I'll use green for this. Um, I need to have a vector that goes from position one to position two. And that's going to be delta x from one to two. And then to go from two to three, I need, again, using pirate map rules to start out over here at position two and then go back to where I am at position three. So that's change in position from two to three. And these are vectors. Then same thing, three to four. Okay, and then finally, four to five. Okay, so change in position isn't exactly the same as velocity. The velocity is change in position divided by the time. But let's just assume that I can write the delta t as one. Maybe these um, photos are one second apart. So then the change in um, position vectors are going to look just like the velocity vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, draw my velocity vectors with their tails all lined up. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to have my velocity um, between one and two. I'll just call it 1.5 to make the notation a little easier. Um, my velocity from 2 to 3, so I'm trying to keep the lengths consistent with what I had above, so velocity 2.5. And then my velocity between 3 and 4, looks like it's about that long. And then finally the one between 4 and 5, looks like it's about that long. So that's my velocity 4.5. Okay, now you might wonder, can I why can I just move the vectors around, is that okay? And the answer is yes. Okay, so remember that the property that defines vectors is they have a magnitude and a direction, uh, but they don't have a location. So I am totally free to move vectors around any which way, whatever's convenient, as long as I keep their length and direction consistent. Okay. Um, okay. So next we want to find the acceleration. And remember, acceleration is um, the derivative of velocity, or the average acceleration is delta v over delta t. 
Okay, so I need to find the delta v's. Well, I can do that because I have the velocity vectors. To, so to go from velocity 1.5 to velocity 2.5, I need to do this. Okay, again, just using pirate map rules. So that's my delta v from 1.5 to 2.5. Okay, then from um, 2.5 to 3.5, I have to add a vector like this. And then finally, one from here to here, that's going to be my delta v um, from 3.5 to 4.5. And my delta v's are all vectors. Okay, so again, if the delta t is a second in each case, then um, the delta v's are going to look just like my accelerations. And so I can line these up if I want to. So my um, oops, my acceleration from 1.5 to 2.5, I'll just call that um, a2. And then from 2.5 to 3.5, it's a little bigger. I'll call that a3. And then it was kind of in the middle for the next one. And I'll call that a4. Okay, so in this example, we have a car that is moving to the left its position vectors are to the right, its change in position vectors are to the left, its velocity vectors are to the left, and its change in velocity vectors are to the left, which means that its acceleration vectors are also to the left. Okay, so you want to be a little careful. Um, you don't want to necessarily think of um, objects that are speeding up as always having accelerations in a particular direction. We did an example before where speeding up to the right meant an acceleration to the right. Now we're speeding up to the left and there's an acceleration to the left. So really you should be going through the process of thinking, okay, how is the velocity changing? Once I know the change in velocity, that will give me information about the acceleration. Okay, so I want to do another example, um, and this one I think is really interesting, um, but a little harder to think about. So for this example, I want you to imagine a skydiver. Okay, and in particular, um, the skydiver is falling fast at first, then opens her parachute and slows down. So falling fast, and then opens the parachute, and then slows down. Okay, and here we want to draw x, v, and A vectors for this. Okay, so I encourage you to pause the video right now and just give it a try. See what you um, can do, and then um, when you get stuck, come back to the video and see how I do it. Okay, so um, I'm going to start again with a strobe diagram. So to show that she's falling fast at first, I'll do um, some circles that are evenly spaced. So that's falling fast, and then um, they'll get a little closer together as she slows down. And then I want to have a couple that are um, equally spaced at that point. So that's once she has finished slowing down. Okay, so then I'll label these one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and I'll do the um, positions, let's say, um, from the top this time. So I'll put my origin up here. So here is um, one position, the next position, the next one, four, five, and six. Then I'm going to do the change in position. Okay, so to go from one to two, there's my change in position, and then here is the next one, and then there's the next one, and then there's the next one, and there's the next one. Okay, so um, these were my positions and my changes in positions. Next, I want to draw the velocities. Well, just like I did above, I'll scale the velocities the same as the um, change in positions. So starting out, falling fast, and then still falling fast, and then going slower, and then slower yet, slower yet. Okay, so these are the velocity vectors. Okay, and then the change in velocity. Well, to go from this one, the first one, to the second one, nothing happens. So that's my change in velocity. I'll just do a dot to indicate there's no change. Then to go from the second one to the third one, it needs to look like that. From the third one to the fourth one, like that. And then finally, a dot for no change in that last interval. Okay, so then finally the accelerations are going to look like no change, accelerating upward, accelerating upward, and then no change. Okay, so even though the skydiver is falling, the acceleration um, during that motion, uh, particularly the part where she opens the chute and slows down, um, that's upwards, which kind of makes sense if you imagine that you actually were the skydiver. When you open your parachute, you'll feel like you're lifted upwards. So um, that's an upwards acceleration that you're experiencing. Okay, and like I said, we'll do some more um, examples of this, but um, you know, this is going to require quite a bit of practice in order to make sense. Um, there's also a nice memory device that you can use um, when you're thinking about accelerations. And I, I think you should use this more to check your answer than to come up with the answer in the first place. Um, but the, a, a trick to remember is that if an object is speeding up, then that means that A and V are in the same direction. And if an object is slowing down, then A and V are opposite directions. Okay, so let's just check this claim based on the examples we just did. Okay, so for the skydiver, 
Um, she is falling downwards, but slowing down. And we've got an acceleration that's upwards. So velocity is down, acceleration is up. So that is consistent with slowing down. And in the first case, we had a car that was moving to the left and speeding up. Its velocity is to the left and its acceleration is to the left. So again, that is consistent with this memory device that I mentioned.